Um, so hi everyone. Can can anyone hear me? Uh, yes, yes, can. Okay, so thank you for joining today's tutorial session. Today we're honored to have Professor Lin Jiping to be our tutorial speaker. So to Professor Lin uh, obtained his PhD in information engineering from the University of Cambridge, and he has been with uh, NTUEE since 1999 as, a, as an associate professor. He's also a distinguished lecturer and chair of the IEEE Circuits and Systems Society, or IEEE CAS in Singapore in year 2007, 2008, and 2019. He's also the editor-in-chief of uh, multidimensional systems and signal processing. Yeah. And his uh, research interest is multidimensional systems and signal processing. So uh, this tutorial session is meant to be for one hour. Professor Lin will share for approximately 40 minutes and leave the remaining 20 minutes to answer all your questions. So if you have any questions throughout the sharing, feel free to type your questions in the Q&A box and we will attend to your questions after the sharing. So I'll now pass my time to Professor Lin. Okay, thanks uh, Chen Tao uh, for the uh, introduction. And uh, let me share my screen first. Okay, can you all view my screen now? Yes. Ah, let me make it full screen. Ah, okay. Yeah, look. So. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming to attend my uh, tutorial uh, on Saturday morning. So that's uh, uh, not a, a good time, but uh, it happened to be, uh, uh, you know, a nice combination because uh, after this uh, first hour of tu tutorial, I'm going for the IP. Uh, today is the competition, three minutes of presentation, and I'm in the committee. I also have a student in the first page and another student for the second page. I think some of you may know this IP is a new scheme. Uh, you can consider more like our uh, schools, uh, Eureka, uh, but it's more even more uh, difficult to get. Uh, only one supervisor can get one student. Ah, okay, so the, for those of you who uh, may want to know more, uh, you can uh, contact me or the committee. Uh, uh, let me uh, talk uh, briefly uh, what I'm going to, uh, to uh, present today. It's not uh, too much uh, the very technical detail. You know, for technical detail, you really need to learn from uh, tutor, uh, other like, uh, 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 books, uh, papers, and like uh, perhaps YouTube uh, nowadays. And uh, furthermore, more importantly, is uh, you need to really uh, do like hands on uh, to develop your own codes and run uh, examples uh, and like practical application. So uh, uh, I will uh, share like something like the combination of. Uh, on the one hand, research work, and uh, on the other side, how to uh, train uh, students, uh, particularly students who uh, you know want to do research. And, and I think uh, this topic is a good uh, experience in sharing this. Uh, so uh, before uh, going further, I would like to thank uh, MLDA uh, for the invitation. Actually, I have a. Uh, a rather long history was MLDA also, you see. Uh, uh, some of you may not know, probably uh, even Chen Tao. Uh, I'm the FYP supervisor of the founding chair of MLDA. I think you all know is Liu Yan. And Liu Yan uh, uh, graduated uh, two years ago. He got the Ko Bung Hui Scholar Award. So you can see this is uh, one of the most uh, priest teachers award. And then uh, last year I was the FYP examiner for the 
uh, the the second uh, MLDA chair, which is uh, Duang Jiahui. Uh, Duang Jiahui, and then he actually last year he invited me to give the tutorial, but I was uh, like too busy last year, so I promise I will do it this year. So I, I just uh, tell you, I keep my promise. <laughs> okay, so now uh, you can see uh, this was uh, actually uh, came from several uh, papers and uh, they are all related to mostly undergraduate students and even one is a PhD student. So you can see here the first author, uh, uh, Zui Han, Gao, Gao Zui Han, uh, she, she uh, was in the same page as Liu Yan, I mentioned early, and she got the uh, Li Kuang Yao gold medal in her year. So you can see this is the, uh, uh, the two of them, uh, I would say is the, among the best students in uh, their batch and probably uh, for the, uh, in, uh, in travel year. So she worked with me on this project uh, as the first undergraduate student. And, uh, but before that, I had a PhD student working in this topic. And uh, uh, at that time there was, uh, deep learning just starting to work, and uh, but I'm a rather conservative uh, uh, researcher, so I asked the PhD student to work more on the traditional machine learning method, which I will briefly introduce. Uh, so there's uh, not not deep learning there, but when Zui Hang Choi, then I I I saw the opportunity of applying a deep learning. And, and that was why the starting of this work uh, uh, several years ago. And after that, there are these uh, Jia, Jia Wei, Peng, uh, Peng Jia Wei. Uh, she was one year journey, uh, then Zui Hang, she continued to uh, take on. And she even uh, did better because she published two uh, conference papers as the first author. Zui Hang published one, uh, but they all work together, okay? So that's, the most uh, recent one is uh, just a few months ago, the end of last year. Uh, and this conference, uh, they are all uh, IEEE flagship uh, conference. So, uh, uh, by the way, Zhui Yang now is, uh, she take the A-star PhD scholarship and now she is a PhD student at uh, uh, CMU in the US. Uh, again, a top university, I, I, I still keep close contact with uh, her and just uh, a few weeks ago, she told me the, the trainings uh, in doing Eureka with me uh, and particularly this uh, work uh, is very useful. So she benefit uh, a lot. Uh, so so I, I think this uh, conference is a student research conference. Uh, so I think I share this at least uh, to let you know the background of this work. Uh, and and uh, I hope you can make good use of this uh, op opportunity. Uh, okay, so now uh, let's go to the more the technical content. This is the outline. Uh, I give uh, an introduction, uh, some background and uh, traditional method and the motivations. And after that, uh, I uh, introduce the methodology used in this work. And uh, you can see here, uh, it will be a uh, Again, a combination of some traditional uh, method and the more popular one uh, related to uh, deep learning, transfer learning, GANs, and uh, yeah, and so on. And then our problem is a practical problem. So we will show you the applications. So that's the uh, what I'm going to share with you. And to start with, uh, for, uh, for this research work, uh, it uh, really came from uh, some clinical requirements. Uh, uh, I think you can, can see the, the image here. And uh, but, uh, at the very beginning, I, I forgot to mention, uh, for this work, uh, it's, uh, I have some collaborators and one of them, uh, the very important one is the uh, medical doctor from the National Skin Center, uh, Dr. Peng, Stephen uh, Peng. And uh, many years ago, uh, he came to me saying, 
uh, we have some uh, skin problem, uh, which is uh, face, you know, the no tumorous facial pigmentation disorder. And uh, that, that was showing here, there are several type five classes. And uh, he, he, he was uh, having a difficult um, position there. He, he said there are many papers, uh, but uh, many several methods, but the problem is uh, um, perhaps uh, like nowadays, uh, people are going for popular topic like deep learning. So, and, and same as in the medical research. Uh, he say uh, uh, most of the papers he can find is on uh, cancer related skin problem uh, or so-called tumorous uh, problem. And no one care about no tumorous. Uh, so, but the methods for cancer uh, skin disease uh, uh, may not be applied here. Then uh, he said, can you help? Uh, because uh, I, uh, I've been working in, uh, uh, in the past more in signal image processing. So he said, oh, at least you can apply your uh, knowledge here. And that was why the starting of my uh, PhD student, uh, Liang Yingfeng's uh, work, uh, I say, okay, then let, let, let's do this uh, research together. And uh, yeah, so, so, so you can see here the importance of doing research is you uh, try to find a useful application to motivate you. Uh, and at the same time, you, of course, you need to look at the literature to see uh, whether there are similar methods uh, you, can, you can apply or not. And in our case here, it turned out to be uh, very, few people, very few people are interested because they, they perceive uh, no cancer related is, is not that important. Uh, very difficult to write paper. Uh, because why? Because when you talk about cancers and everyone say, oh, that's uh, a fatal disease, uh, must be very important. But this is not uh, to totally true because uh, you see, uh, for example, uh, for uh, particularly for ladies, you know, the appearance is more important. Uh, then if you have your face having this kind of uh, uh, freckles or malachima and so on, then it it do not look like, uh, and that's the one, uh, one problem. Uh, furthermore, they uh, sometimes this kind of uh, even no tumorous uh, uh, facial pigmentation problem it can indicate uh, you may have other health condition, and that's why it's very important to classify, uh, you know, belong to which class, so that the clinical doctor they can apply the. Uh, right medicine and to do the treatment. Uh, so what they did uh, before applying computer uh, com uh, computer assist method is uh, they do it manually. Uh, and uh, of course the doctor has been training in this, so they know roughly. Uh, looking at the image, they know which uh, type of the problem. But however, as you all know, uh, in Singapore, medical doctor, you know, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very hard to do the training. Uh, you, you may know recently there were even some cheating case because it's, uh, the requirement is very tough. Uh, I, uh, we all know that, uh, but of course, uh, you, you, you don't go to cheat in your exams, uh, just like, uh, you know, uh, all of you, uh, our students here, we pay uh, very, very important to this. Uh, but uh, anyway, to do it manually is uh, time consuming. And then furthermore is uh, later I will show you this, even within one class, the variation is large. So, uh, so different doctor may give different opinion and uh, they may not even agree to each other. Uh, so therefore uh, we fear it will be good to use uh, computer methods, uh, machine learning to give a more uh, 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 objective, uh, you know, like a, a criteria. And that's how uh, we come to this uh, automatic uh, classification method, uh, also save the doctor's time. Uh, so this work has been uh, 
uh, ongoing for several years, but I, I, I should say now I, I more or less finish uh, this work. Uh, we move on to the other work. Uh, so it's good to, uh, to share with you uh, what you have we've done and the experience uh, we get. Okay, uh, so the, uh, even so now um, deep learning is popular. Still, it will be good to uh, learn some traditional machine learning method. And so that's why I uh, very quickly to uh, give a quick uh, overview on this. Uh, one uh, of the way to do is, uh, uh, yeah, here I'm using image uh, as an example, but it can, can apply to signals or it can apply to features. So you start with your image and then you do uh, feature extraction uh, to capture the uh, useful information. Uh, for example, in image, you can have colors, textures, and so on. Then you build a classifier. Uh, there are many classifiers like SVF, and so on. So one of the one, the also very useful uh, machine learning methods uh, we use uh, is this uh, prob probabilistic uh, linear discriminant analysis. Uh, later I will uh, go through it very quickly. Uh, and then the features, as I mentioned, can have uh, uh, color textures and you can apply some other signal processing methods such as the garbage filters uh, 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 to get the garbage features, uh, uh, so uh, and so on. And uh, however, uh, also we try very hard, uh, still uh, having the difficulty to achieve the uh, high accuracy. Uh, later I will explain why. Uh, uh, so the best the. Uh, my PhD student at that time, uh, about maybe six years ago, uh, he tried very hard, but still uh, can get 77.3 uh, percentage. Uh, it's less, even less than 80. Usually for medical application, 80% uh, accuracy is considered as a minimum requirement. Uh, lower than that, uh, the medical doctor may not uh, like trust you. Uh, okay. so, so uh, some of the reason is uh, sensitive to within class uh, variant of the data. Uh, I mean, even uh, we know is within the same class, uh, the difference from one image to the other is big. So, uh, and furthermore, there's, uh, there are also uh, between different class, uh, you can see some similarities also and uh, another, problem is uh, since we rely on human effort to get these handcraft features. Uh, so they, there were also some uh, errors uh, causing. Uh, and then uh, furthermore, this is a very uh, important one to take note for deep, uh, even for traditional machine learning, it will be good to have more data. If you have a small set of uh, domain specific data set, it will also be very hard to do the trainings and so on. So, uh, so let me quickly go through this. Uh, nowadays, uh, probably not many people uh, really spend time to read this uh, mess, but uh, uh, I am a more mess related uh, professors. I, I taught uh, courses uh, all mostly related to mess. Uh, for example, if you are a e student here, uh, I've been a tutor for the second year uh, course uh, called Signal and Systems, uh, 2010. And I always told students, you need to have a good math uh, foundation and background to move on. So, uh, so this is uh, one of the very popular uh, traditional machine learning method called as probabilistic linear discriminant analysis or in short. PLDA and uh, it it uh, it was um, uh, available for many years, uh, like more than ten years now. And uh, and then the idea here is uh, represent the the uh, samples, you know, the given data as a as a linear uh, combination. Uh, uh, but the approach here is. 
uh, looking from the probabilistic point of view, uh, consider that there's some kind of uh, random data following certain distribution. So that's why here uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, coefficients uh, which follow certain distribution and also the measurement uh, measurement errors we call noise term. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that uh, that's good. here is a uh, uh, some more de description of this hidden variable uh, H and W. Uh, here the uh, this uh, calligraph N is typically in mass in signal processing refer to Gaussian distribution, and this is the mean. This is the variance. So. In our case here, uh, we can uh, model that as a Gaussian distribution, zero means and the uh, variant uh, is uh, IID. Uh, okay. And then after that, uh, this is only for this uh, two variable. Uh, what we are caring more is the data, you see, uh, and also the unknown parameter here. So uh, again here, you need to learn a little bit on a probability uh, theory. Uh, you uh, you can model that as a conditional uh, probability in this in this case. Uh, again, here uh, since our model is linear, so uh, Gaussian variable when you do linear combination is still Gaussian, and that's why this is uh, still Gaussian. But it become a little bit more complicated. It's no no longer zero means, uh, the, and the variant uh, also change. And these are the uh, parameter vectors uh, you need to estimate in order to uh, test on a new uh, test sample. Okay, and uh, yeah. Uh, so again here, uh, 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 remember we are dealing with multiple class. Uh, so uh, samples from the same class, uh, uh, they, uh, they will share the, the the same uh, the between uh, class ca character characters uh, which uh, is in the model we call it edge. So so you can have uh, in this case uh, each sample uh, it follows certain distribution. When you put together, it will be a joint probability of all the J sample in this uh, class I. And of course, when I change, uh, you will. Uh, you will have to have take different sample and then you will have a different joy probabilities. Uh, furthermore, uh, once you have the test sample, because you know machine learning, uh, I think you should uh, know the basic uh, now is uh, you have training samples. Uh, uh, of course, I'm talking about supervised uh, machine learning. Uh, you can have uh, unsupervised one, which is quite different. For supervised one, you you take some training samples, uh, and then uh, after that, uh, you have the test samples, uh, which uh, uh, you can test it based on uh, what you what you already learned in the training. So uh, you can see the difference here. Uh, you add another test test sample, so that uh, you uh, we want to test whether this uh, new test sample belong to class I or class I plus one and so on. Uh, okay. So uh, therefore, uh, remember we're having total I classes. Uh, so you can uh, put all this uh, sample together. And uh, since we are dealing with Gaussian, then uh, Gaussian uh, random variable, it's a nice property. Uh, you can uh, just multiply those uh, probability together. And then uh, after that, uh, you can see uh, whether uh, which class uh, give you the largest uh, probability. So uh, this is roughly the uh, the idea about if you are using uh, traditional method uh, PLDA, uh, and uh, you can also visualize uh, the the uh, this approach, uh, you can see here roughly. Uh, in the case of uh, the data are very uh, nice, uh, in a sense easier to classify, then you can see uh, they are more or less uh, separated, uh, separated. So in this case, uh, uh, 
But uh, remember, we are using the probability approach. So it follows certain distribution. We know uh, it, it follow within this region, but we, are, we are never know, uh, never be sure uh, it's exactly at that uh, particular location. So therefore we draw this. Uh, and uh, in the case of not much overlap between class, then it's very easy. Uh, you can uh, test the uh, test sample, uh, give a high accuracy. However, uh, in our problems and in some other application, uh, you have this uh, so-called overlap, and that's the what that uh, that that will cause problem uh, if uh, if we uh, use the approach. Because in this case, you can see here, uh, within class, the variation is large, you see. Uh, and then uh, also uh, there will be samples uh, in the overlapping uh, region. So therefore, in this case, uh, directly applying this uh, PLD method, it will not work, it keep very poor result. And that's why we came out with a so-called voting base, uh, BPLDA. Uh, so the idea here is to, to put all this uh, together into a larger model uh, and then uh, train this all together. But however, uh, we do not use all the sample uh, the, uh, uh, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some of the sample uh, it give uh, wrong information uh, because they are like overlap and so on. So what I do here is we, uh, given a test sample, we select those uh, nearby, nearby one. Uh, uh, then uh, after that, uh, we, we test each of the class uh, and, and, and see uh, in this case, uh, what, uh, which class uh, give, the, give the largest uh, joy uh, probability. So, uh, uh, in this way, it improved the traditional PLDA uh, by adding this uh, voting scheme. Uh, but however, as I mentioned uh, early, the uh, accuracy is not uh, very good. So let me move on to the new approach uh, since it takes a little bit uh, longer time to explain the, uh, the math. So uh, here, uh, our main work is to apply like uh, deep learning approach like uh, CNNs and uh, so that uh, we are, we are uh, uh, be able to uh, extract uh, more information. Uh, uh, let's see uh, what we can do here. Uh, so one way to do is, uh, remember as I mentioned earlier, in our case here, the doctor give a very limited uh, sample. Uh, then uh, we, we all know uh, transfer learning is a very powerful machine learning approach uh, to, to be able to uh, make good use of the uh, pre-trained model, which uh, typically you can have millions of image to do the training. And in our uh, case, we have a very uh, small data set. Uh, you, uh, you can tap on the pre-trained model and then do some fine tuning. But uh, in typically even transfer learning, we still need uh, like at least hundreds of uh, images in each class. Uh, in our case, uh, we only have 30 images per class and the doctors say they don't have uh, more data. So that's how, uh, uh, that's how we, uh, we need to think uh, another way by uh, using GAN. GAN is a generative adverse uh, serial network to, to increase the samples in each, each uh, of, the, of the class so that uh, uh, in the end, the deep learning approach uh, can be applied here. There are many GANs and uh, what uh, we select after trying different version, we find progressive gang or uh, P gang. Uh, some people call it as PG gang, it's the same. Uh, then uh, that, that, that give a good result. So, uh, so our work here is the latest one is to 
combine both uh, transfer learning, uh, P, P gang, and also uh, improve smoke uh, to narrow down the gap uh, between the amount of data required and available. So, uh, this uh, small is, uh, again, is a traditional method to generate uh, new data sample. Uh, uh, so uh, you can see this is a good combination. Again, traditional method and the new one. So let me uh, go through this. Chang-Shun uh, learning, as, as you all know now, uh, is a very uh, popular uh, method. I already e explained earlier. Uh, you, you learn from, uh, for example, the general data set, image net, and so on. And this is the, at that time, there was with this work uh, a few years ago, uh, we uh, use inception rest net uh, to, to do. Now there are more uh, bigger network like uh, uh, like things nets and so on. Uh, so this, uh, so this is the network uh, architecture we use uh, at, at at that time. Uh, I won't go <laughs> into detail because it keep and <clears throat> keep changing. Uh, uh, I would like to briefly mention this uh, smoke. Smoke means synthetic uh, minority over sampling techniques. Uh, so the comparison is a uh, smoke versus gang is. Uh, like uh, SVM versus now our our uh, CNN deep learning it, it's a traditional method which has been available as you can see here two zero zero two it's uh, more than uh, twenty years ago it's very simple and uh, it, it it is working in some cases I won't say it's always work but uh, at least uh, it's uh, it works in our our application here the. Uh, the idea of small is a very simple. Yeah. If you have two samples, uh, you can just do a linear combination and to interpolate and to get a new sample, which in a sense similar to the, the two sample, uh, we call parent sample. And, but yes, uh, it, it is a new uh, images. Uh, so this is an example. Uh, we have two parent images here, uh, you can see belong to the same class, uh, it's called uh, Lettiching, and then it interpolate and generate this one. So it's, it's a new one, but uh, you can say it's similar to the other. So this is the, the way we'll be uh, doing. Uh, yeah, uh, then it, uh, pic pictorially, uh, you can also see this, uh, you know, this, this is a typical case of imbalanced data. You have a large class here, then a small, class here. So we need to generate more uh, by using this combination. And uh, we also came out with an uh, improved uh, smoke by uh, traditionally the original method is the way is choosing from zero to one. Uh, but we find the extreme value near zero or near one, uh, they're not good because they more or less give the same uh, parent image. So what we do is a limited, uh, this is simple to the range of 0.1 to 0.9. And then uh, initially you only take two out of the five Ninis neighbor, but that, that generally not enough image. So we enlarge this by take four out of five. Uh, and finally, the, the even with this implementation, the image we generate, some of them are still look very similar. So we apply this, uh, again, this is a traditional way of doing, we call SSIM index, similarity, uh, uh, to assess this similarity using structural similarity index. Uh, this uh, also uh, still uh, popularly used uh, nowadays, and the math formula given in this way, uh, I won't go into the detail, all this you can, check like uh, from this reference here. Uh, and uh, roughly the idea is using this measure, uh, we, we will be able uh, to, to see which images uh, to, uh, to keep, which uh, you can discard, uh, okay? So uh, now we move on to GAN. Uh, so uh, there, 
Gang now is also very popular. This is the simple is uh, just a, a workflow uh, about Gang is uh, you have some real sample, uh, but they are limited. Uh, and uh, what we do is you have a generator and a discriminate, uh, discriminator. You use random noise to inject the generator. You will create some fake sample. You, uh, at the beginning, you're very far away from real one. Yeah. So you need to use a discriminator to tell whether it's real or fake. Uh, and then after some iteration, gradually this uh, fake sample will be close to the real sample. And uh, so, that's, so that's why in the end, you can get a reasonably good quality of uh, new sample. Uh, there, uh, again, it has been on for several years and uh, there are many methods. Uh, so one of them is a progressive growing gang or uh, called P gang or PG gang. Uh, so uh, here is the, uh, I don't know whether some of you learn wavelet transform. It's, it's uh, uh, scaling uh, up, you see. You can start from, uh, in this case, uh, very small images, uh, tau samples uh, to even four by four. Why? Because smaller sample, Smaller size of sample is easier to train. Uh, and then progressively, you can increase up to, uh, in our case, uh, it can be uh, 100 by 100, or uh, can be even uh, even larger. So this is uh, a quite, quite stable uh, ways of training gang. And that, that was one way to adapt in our application. Uh, so uh, put, putting all this together, uh, we can have the flow uh, workflow for uh, our application here. We start from original image using improved uh, smoke to generate uh, some additional image. And then we feed both into the gang to generate more images. And then after that, it goes through this CNN classification model and uh, get the get the results. And so this is the uh, application for the our data. As I mentioned earlier, all these are rare images uh, taken by the medical doctor uh, in the National Skin Center. Uh, but uh, there is a limitation; they can only provide. Uh, 30 images in one class. So in total, five classes. And of course, this is not the whole phase. You just cut uh, the part where you have this uh, management uh, uh, freckles uh, appearing there and some other class. So this is the enlarged one. So you can see, you can see a better view. Uh, there is uh, some similarity some, sometimes for for doctors, they are better in differentiate, but for for lemons like us, sometimes we buy like but this tool looks uh, similar. So, uh, so it's very useful to train the uh, algorithm, uh, train the computer to be able to do it. And now I give you uh, the examples where uh, you know even deep learning, even gang uh, were not worked uh, in in some cases. Uh, so uh, uh, initially we thought this p -gun is good enough uh, to be able to, uh, to, to do it directly from the given uh, 30 images each class. Uh, so we apply p -gun, but however it produced a very poor quality result like this. Uh, uh, so, you, so from here you can see uh, this is not uh, what we want. It's very far from the from the original images given, uh, and that's why we uh, we're doing two step. The uh, step one is using improve uh, improve small, uh, which can generate uh, some relatively good image, but it cannot generate uh, more because uh, you go further then the end up with a very similar. So roughly uh, say each class you have 30, using, using improved small, it may generate 50 uh, uh, or up to about 
100. And, but however, having this uh, 100 new images uh, in each class, uh, then we think to the PGA, it will give a much, uh, much better quality of the new images we generate. And, and this is uh, lesson learned is, uh, even if you are aiming at a very uh, popular and good uh, technology, you don't forget the, the traditional one. Uh, and and you never know, sometimes some good combination will give you better results, at least in some application. Uh, and uh, yeah, now we come back about this uh, HSI on applying the SSIM. Uh, so, uh, so you can see here if we actually if we do not uh, use the improved smoke, the range of each uh, it can be uh, very near one. Uh, uh, even even using improved smoke without using P gun, uh, then uh, you can see this is very uh, too near one. One is uh, you are always get back to the already get back to the original image, so it's not good. So, uh, but on the other hand, you, you need to have some similarity. As it, if if uh, it's too low, that means what you generate is not within this class. So, uh, by applying this P gang and the improved smoke, we find uh, this give us a, a variation, but still similar to the, to the initial class. It's a good combination. You see here, the high, uh, limit, uh, the upper end is, is smaller uh, than this, but uh, the lower end is also smaller, but it's not too small. So you, you need at least uh, a 0 0.6 or so on. Otherwise, the image looks uh, very, very different. So to uh, put together, uh, we summarize uh, what the methods we use and uh, also the result we achieve. Uh, so this is the first work that the PhD student did and, and we did publish in a journal paper, which is a good uh, biomedical related uh, uh, journal. Uh, the accuracy is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, less than 80, 77.3. And the standard deviation is also a little bit la large compared to other. Then uh, the first student uh, did this using Transfer learning and smoke, uh, then it improved the accuracy, also reduced the standard deviation. Uh, and then uh, uh, after that, uh, we uh, used improved smoke, uh, then uh, also uh, do some more improvement uh, by increasing accuracy, reduce the standard deviation. So this is the uh, most recent work uh, which applied P gain and uh, and published just less than one year ago. So this is the best we can achieve uh, now. Uh, and uh, I think it's very hard in this case to get near 100. That's not practical also. Uh, so now to conclude the tutorial here, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, I briefly introduced this uh, v, uh, PLDA, uh, which uh, just to show in the early days, uh, how you tackle this machine learning method by building complicated uh, math models and apply probability and so on. But uh, still, it's very hard to get uh, to high accuracy for even our practical uh, problem because the small data set and the, the, the large variations and so on. Uh, and then we apply uh, transfer learning uh, by pre-train the model uh, and then you can extract more uh, genetic features. Uh, we don't need to handcraft the, uh, the features uh, anymore so uh, it can uh, provide better results. Uh, and after that uh, we apply this, uh, again this is a traditional method, small, uh, to generate some synthetic sample. Uh, to enlarge the set of available training data. Uh, um, finally, we uh, apply this uh, PGAN 
and together with improve uh, small, uh, then that's the the best combination. And we uh, we also using the trans uh, transfer learning using the same uh, pre-train network, which uh, is not now not very a popular one, but still usable, inception raised net. Uh, and uh, so you can see this is finally we get 14% uh, uh, accuracy increment compared with the traditional method uh, like four years ago. And recently there are some other researchers uh, taking on our approach. They, uh, uh, they apply multi-views and so on to but uh, we uh, we have stopped this uh, research work uh, more or less. Uh, I, I don't have students working on this anymore. Uh, so uh, anyway, I move on to other research uh, projects. So that's all. Uh, thank you for your.